اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم به بهی نستعین و انه خیر الناصر و معین Today is 12 March 2011 and we are having session number 4 of Aql or Intellect and session number 9 of Ziyarat Jamea Kabira and I just want to because I know there are other members who are not here here that's to know that we I personally, I'm always conscious of their presence in our session. So whenever I talk to you guys, I see Zahra Jaffa and <coughs> Sister Emma as well as Rabab, they are present in our um, sessions. So we go, I'm hoping, inshallah, the next week would be the last week of Aql. So I could see that I couldn't finish it today. So... Uh, Clearly, session by session, you all remember, I have asked you, please do, do your writings for me, so that you, we have spoken about alam of tabi'at and all these issues of distance and qurbat and ghaybat and ignorance and wahshat and zulmat and, and kasrat, right? They all have, these, these words are not just synonyms that I have taken and just to make like a, make it rhythmic. They all have reference to uh, to the characteristics of this material world. So also we discussed about, in the second session, we discussed about the uh, madde and the motion that it has and how uh, alam of madde is the alam of mix-up mix and mixture of adam, adam or non-existence and existence. And we, dis we saw and we noticed there are two non-existential <laughs> phenomena in the material world. One being the uh, Adam al-Huzur or non-presence of a part of any part of matter to the other part of the matter. So that brings an, uh, an ad Adam or non-existence there. And also the non-existence being inherently in the material world, in the world of matter, which is the potentiality that... Uh, while we are talking now, around us are full of potentialities which are just waiting uh, for their time and turn and condition to come to actuality. That is also another uh, non-existential phenomenon. So this material world is uh, full of uh, non-existence and existence. And that side of non-existential side of the matter has given that has brought down the wujud into its lowest intensity. So, material world is the lowest intensity in terms of wujud, or has the lowest intensity in the terms of wujud. The other thing that we did discuss last session was about uh, all the main topic was aql fa'al, that active intellect, which I also explained how masha'is, which are the uh, chain uh, sort of maktab of comes from Aristu or Aristotle and then Bu Ali Abyssina is the Islamic scholar of that type of thinking which they believe in Ogula Ashare ten, 10 types or 10 levels of Aq which the last they're all fa'al in, in terms of they have they have they are active because Aq the nature of the Aq is fa'al however the main fa'al of aq is referred to the last aq, which is in touch with material world. That is uh, more predominantly referred to as aql fa'al or active intellect, because the fail of it being bringing uh, objects from out of potentiality into actuality. That is the action and fail that it does. And then we also said that aql fa'al is, uh, we said that aql, what is referred to aql by philosophers is the same thing that is referred to malaikatullah in Quran, and that is what urafa uh, call asmaullah. They, they have got basically uh, the same. Uh, they are the same. The same thing. But uh, today, what we want to discuss is we want to go touch a little bit on the issue of taqol itself, as well as. Uh, Aql in different stages, and then hopefully uh, we talk about then 
law and qalam, which are two main things that you might, you might all of us have heard of qalam and law. They are also some creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which they apparently have a big importance in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. And I reiterate my request to ponder upon these things because otherwise it remains fully in a, a, in a theoretical level and it's not going to help really. It would, it would be, I would never call it waste of time, but it will not have the effect that it should, especially where it's supposed to lead at the, in the next session. And, okay, about the issue of ta'aqqul. Ta'aqqul is the verb which or the action uh, of if you refer to the meaning in your mind first remembering, remembering the meaning that Imam Ali alayhi salam has introduced Joharun Darrak which is uh, an, an, it has got it, it has got Edrak self awareness and self perception and self Edrak right and the fail of ta'aqqul is the fail of that we do or an agil does. Agil does the fail of ta'aqqul so that does an idrak of some object. So when we do ta'aqqul, what we are doing basically we are, we are, it's an attempt and fail that we perceive that object but in different levels. Because when we, especially when we say percep perception, and I use the word perceive, these are the problems that we have in English, or, or the definitions of it. Per perception, in my understanding, mostly refers, in non-philosophical terms, refers to sensual things. That like you perceive by eye, you perceive by ear, by ears you perceive. But the, the, the proper Arabic word I have seen for it is idrak. So we have idrak hissi. It's a more general term. Idrak hissi, idrak khiyali, and idrak al aqli. Idrak hissi is when, by your senses, we, we get to perceive things, and when idrak khiyali is when we do it by khiyal, and idrak aqli, which is the name of it, is not quite clear. Intellectual idrak. Idrak has got idrak or taqul. So we are, what we are, we are we are seeing this things together. Ta'aqqul has got also different levels. Maybe if, if you look at it, I'm, look, I'm talking about it from a general terms rather than specifically you say ta'aqqul, ta'aqqul itself, because it goes by ah, it, it refers to tajarud. So basically, it is not probably, it's not a very technical word. You do ta'aqqul of something which is maddi. Because ta'aqqul is mujarrad, aql is mujarrad, and ta'aqqul is, is, is about something which is mujarrad. But why I'm, do, I'm, I'm trying to I'm brought it into this context, I'm trying to say ta'aqqul has got, because uh, Mullah Sadra has got a discussion and a, a concept that he does not believe even senses do, ta even the senses, a drug of senses rem remains at the level of sensual a drug that all lead to ta'aqqul. That's, that's what he says, which is not our talk today. But I'm saying why I have chosen this word of ta'aqqul, even for the sensual, because I'm bringing it to more of a drug. And then when, more technically, when it reaches to a, intellectual a drug, then becomes ta'aqqul in the, in the sense that it is mujarrad. When, you, when it's mujarrad, you do only ta'aqqul. But let's look at the levels of Self uh, level, levels of awareness about something. That's my point. Levels of awareness. One is sensual level, or in material level, where which basically corresponds or conforms with our animalistic soul. So our animalistic soul does this uh, first level of a drug or perception, which is to know. It comes to know about araz, which we know we have. Briefly, we know what araz and johar is. And araz are the appearance of objects. So that's the first level of, this is when you come to see something. When you come and you, you come uh, and see something that you had not seen before. <coughs> the first level that you, you, you face it and you, you perceive something of it is the araz of that. 
Of course, one may argue and say, but what about when someone has never heard about angels and it comes to know about angels? Is there any sensual perception there? Not. Because it, it refers to the level of that object too. If that level, the level of the object is not a material being, then that, that level of perception does not exist for it. If that object itself is an intellectual object, then obviously there is no uh, sensual nor imaginal level, uh, level of perception. So, but when you look at a material thing, what we do is we first see arrows and tool and arrows and color and, and smell and taste and all those things which are about the zahir and appearance of objects. That's the first thing, the first level we get to know something. And then we hear what happens uh, automatically uh, for, he, for human being, of course. Automatically, we do a tajrid, and in our idrak, we take it one level up. We take it one level higher to our imaginal level. When it goes to our imaginal level, that means we are dealing with a picture, an image of that object. And of course, imaginal imaginal also imaginal understanding and perception of the objects also relates to uh, uh, comparative knowledge of that thing to other things around. That's also a, because comparison is a, an action of khiyal, qobay khiyal. So almost, if you, if you notice, almost whatever you see, there is always a comparative knowledge about it to the objects around it. When you look at a glass, the com- comparatively, even if you, even if you don't, Notice it even if you don't look at it, that you, you compare it, it has a comparability, com- comparativeness with, with glass itself, this cup, glass cup, as a, with the glass itself, with other types of cu- cup, with, with paper cup, with uh, mug. So there is always a comparative, comparativeness between op- all the objects we see as well. Or about the colors of it, about the build of it, nature of it, design of it. But then from here we when we, we look at objects in a higher level, that means we do another level of tajrid and it goes our, up to our wahm, level of wahm, which I have not, was not part of my intention to refer to wahm because when we go to wahm, since wahm itself is the, of the nature of aql, we can probably ignore that part and we call it aql for our purpose of discussion. So the level, the other level that we uh, in this engaged object from its uh, imaginal level, it is when we ignore or we uh, put aside the image of it and we, intellect- we, we take it to the intellectual level, that is when you look at it in universal term. That is idraq aqli. So when you think universally about a cup or a table or a computer or any, any object, that is the idrak that which is called intellectual level. We have done idrak aqli. That you see that matter, that object, regardless of that particular object that we have, the meaning, the meaning of it which encompasses all other, uh, let's say, computers in the world. So what we know about the computer is that universal aspect of the object. So here, when when we, are, we have reached to a level that we have, our ta'aqol reaches to the universal side of the object that is a more deeper knowledge, that is a more uh, understandable knowledge because we know that by, by only viewing, if there are objects that we don't know, we by only viewing them and seeing them by, uh, through their arrows, we really don't, don't get to know much about it. It will, be, it will remain, it will be, I would say even this is even it's even less than this, but it will be how animal deals with objects. But even animal is able to do imaginal idrak imaginal idrak of objects. So people, another word you can see, you can if you if you bring this notion and look at the people who are very materialistic. They have very material materialistic view, and they have no. Uh, they don't know anything other than this material world and joys and uh, enjoyments of this material world and they have no belief in higher than this level. So you can, 
we can imagine that their understanding of objects are so superficial. They don't really don't know, even the world around them, they don't know anything about the colors of the, the grasses being green and the trees being, being like that and the fruits having that taste and food having this taste and this smell and that. that that's all we, we would probably, uh, if, even if we have not seen and have people like that very close, but we, can, we, we know how they, at least through the movies and films, we see what, how they deal with objects, with the nature around them. The other level of a drug is a drug shahudi or a wujudi. That's a different type of a drug. What do we call the first level? Hissi, hissi, yeah, sensual. Sensual, imaginal, intellectual, and then existential. In that existential or shahudi, that what you do is like burning with fire. With burning with fire, you don't, you're not talking about the color or taste of it. You're not talking about the look of it. We are not talking about the image of it, and we are not talking about what it means, the meanings of it. We are talking about the f- what you feel in, in you and within you. That is a different level of a drug. Or when we have pain, or when we have joy in heart. These are things that, I mean, there are things that you not, we, may not be, we may not even be able to, uh, to explain in universally, intellectually, imaginally what they are, how they are. So, another one would, may wonder that, so what is this? Another type of a drug that we do is beyond mat- uh, shahudi and existential. Not when I say beyond, I mean different from that. Is There are times that one would experience a manifestation type of a drug in heart. What manifestation? When I say a drug, I bring that, remember, from here we are not talking about ta'aqul, finish. Ta'aqul, these, these, these were the levels of ta'aqul. But there are other types of a drug that one would do, right? That a drug in a sense that, that you do feel the presence of something, a higher wujud in you. What about that? What is that? When there, when there are like, uh, there are, we hear, we read from, in the, for, from the people it, which has happened for them at least, that in Salat they reach sometimes to, uh, when they hear their own recitation of Hamd and Surah and Quran, they hear it from the, another tongue, by another ear. It's neither the ear, tongue, it's not their own ears. So what are those? Or, there are, I have heard from people who have told me here in Oakland that uh, there are times that they are doing reading Quran, reciting Quran, that some sort of uh, things happens for them that they can see differently and they see different things. They are not in the same place that they were sitting. They are not in the, on the sajjade and they are not on the Quran or... So they get connection. They, I mean, these, these things come also, a lot of times it comes with physical dis- disturbances. Physical disturbances means shivering and, or uh, pressure in the body and those type of things. What are those things? They are what, what, uh, what I re- refer them to. They are manifestation that um, a higher wujud is, which is called mozher in this action. We become mazhar for another mozher. Mazhar is the one who manifests. Mazhar is the one who is being manifested. Okay? This is here the issue of fa'il and maf'ul. Mazhar is fa'il and mazhar is maf'ul. Right? So, there are times and drugs of like that, which they refer to... I think Allama Husseini Tehrani refers to them, I remember from him, he calls them Tajalliyat Asma'i. <coughs> Tajalliyat Asma'i basically is when Asma, which are other, because Asma are, definitely are 
موجودات اور وجود higher than us in level of creation in, in level of being are they are higher than us so this what he has termed tajalliyat asmai what he has termed is when it comes even to lower uh, lower than that because tajalliyat asmai is quite a high level of tajalli it's not doesn't happen for everyone tajalliyat asmai basically uh, an example of it is when people in salat they reach to a level that they hear from different from another tongue by another ear so that is tajalli asmai but a lot of times a lot of times i mean it is for not for everyone is as high as that it can be tajalli of a higher wujud of yourself to yourself but not in that level but even even a higher level like because we all have we know that our wujud is tashkiki we have higher levels in us right and as high as it goes as high as imam ali himself imam ali himself So when we read, we read in not better that the lam yachlu minna that we are not khali, you, or you are not, he is not khali of us. That means in maratib of wujud, he, he is the highest level of wujud in us. So sometimes, sometimes for some people, even Imam Tajalli of Imam is felt in the heart of the people. So this is not part of taqwul, but this is also I wanted to just. touched it to say there are other levels of idrak but these idrakas remember these levels of idrak is is uh, we, we take it out and when i say idrak because of that feeling that it creates otherwise probably uh, it's not idrak in a sense that that you you uh, you get any ihate because imam ali alayhi salam says uh, in that definition of aq when he says uh, جوهران در راق محیطون بل اشیا من جمعی جهات ها در میز when you, uh, this is the level of عقل عقل is محیط محیط means encompassing he become عقل is encompassing of things from all the aspects of it right so when for instance even for us for objects it can become like that probably to an extent that we become encompass, encompassing we, we get to know something But definitely, this is out of question for this tajalliya that I said, because those tajalliyas are not part of taqwal anyway. Okay, so I hope I have not confused you. I, I address another issue which is not a part of taqwal, but also it is some sort of idrak that we do. If it's if it's clear, salawat. Now let's look at the aql in in insan, in human being, because we remember there is one one what is called aql, and there is what is called aql. <coughs> what happens? What is aql when they say they use this word? I don't know how to what translation, but I explain. When aql does takarror, takarror is estekarror, is residing the type of thing. When does Aql does takarrul in someone that someone becomes aql. Right? So when in us, in us when we have aql, and aql resides in us, and we are able to use it to use the aql and do takarrul of an object, we become aql. Okay. Aql is the doer of takarrul, the one who does takarrul. And what is ma'akul? Things which is uh, intellected. intellected. So what becomes intellected? Masalan, if I if I do ta'akul of this recorder, this becomes ma'akul and I am aqil. Okay? But one question. This is material, right? So can a material thing become ma'akul? Yes? No, no. Let's go to that level that I said. This is more technical level because I first gave you that, those uh, levels of taqul, which was good for confusing you. But I bring you back now to say taqul is about tajarrut. When you do taqul, the level of taqul is in the level of tajarrut. So matter cannot be uh, maqul. So when you when this becomes maqul, this recorder becomes maqul. That 
صورت آبید بیکام معقول ماده cannot become معقول so that meaning that you can take out of this becomes معقول and surat of what is surat of what was surat what is surat of everything that's the meaning that you understand from that things uh, or surat it, it is what it gives shayiyat and 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 thingness to a thing right you, you, you can does it make the right sense in you when you say thingness when you say for instance when you say water that <laughs> this is funny huh language mixes up in mind I was saying so water yet or water is <laughs> water yet or water <laughs> is what it is known it is known with it is known for water is known for all those things that that wetness and, and, and coldness not in terms of temperature that is you say uh, uh, it is yeah, sayaliyat or fluidity. These are all the things that we know about the water. So, the, but the moment the same water goes on, on, if you put it on the pot and put it on the stove, it becomes uh, vapors. So you don't call that anymore water, though all the materials are the same. Or uh, when it becomes cloud or when it becomes ice, is the door, they are still the same. The surat is changed. These are the, this same water is changing surat in different on those different environments. So, what we are saying, what becomes ma'gul is mujarrat, right? So ta'akul. So now let's let's now become more clear. Ta'akul really, in technical terms, is about mujarradat. When you think so, you make something mujarrad, it only become uh, on the ta'akul of, of us. So, for instance, when we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we said in a sense, in a context, we said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aql mahs, right? There is no difference between saying this and saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aql mahs. Really, there is no difference in this matter. It's the same thing. Okay, now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aghil of and he is also ma'akul. What does that mean? Allah is ma'akul and Allah is aghil. Allah does ta'akul of himself. When he does ta'akul of himself, when he perceives, not, not, uh, not sensory of course, not stajirubil, not sensory, but in, even is even it's not is even higher than intellectually, but we don't have uh, word or we don't have even understanding of it. But when Allah does taqul of His own zat, that is when Allah is aqil and Allah is maqul. But Allah is maqul of Himself. Okay. So kull aqilin mujarradun wa kull aqilin wa kull na kull aqilin mujarradun wa kull maqulin mujarradun. Can we say? Ma'akul is mujarrad, of course. Ma'akul is not maddi. Okay? But what, what I want from all of us is let's keep this notion now. Just know it and keep it for, for our further discussion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aqil of his zat and he is at the same time because he is known by he himself, he is ma'akul. It's the same thing for us. When you know, you know about yourself, so you are aqil and you are ma'akul too at the same time. Okay. You are the intelligent. Uh, the intellect. You are and you are the in intellectual. In intellectual, yes, at the same time. So basically, when someone knows himself, he is <laughs> aqil and ma'akul. So can we say aqil and ma There is, if you notice here, there is a thought of aqil and ma'akul. Aqil and ma'akul are the same. So basically, this notion has been discussed: a thought aqil and ma'akul. By Bu Ali Sina, Abi Sina, he has not accepted it apparently. But Allah Mahasan Zadi says, in a time in his life, he has accepted it. Because they have, they have a different notion about it. The reason that Abi Sina and Masha is, they think differently is about this because they say, Surat Elmi, Surat Elmi. Understand everyone, understand what Surat Elmi form? And ilmi means 
uh, علمی دیگه what do I say <laughs> I don't want to use the word scientific it's not the scientific knowledge knowledge but how do you put it together صورت علمی knowledge form okay knowledge form صورت uh, علمی they say مشایز they, they say is is in the way of ارتسام on on نفس ارتسام means when you draw drawing is called ارتسام in Arabic right So it's like uh, Avicenna and those maktab, uh, they believe when nafs acquires knowledge, it is like drawing a line on a paper. That's a different notion than from what uh, Mullah Sadra says, which is, in fact, he says, which is more, I mean, when I say more in my uh, humble understanding, I can agree more with this, that آقل و معقول become the same. It is not اضافی from outside. This is not in of something. It's not something which becomes, it which becomes added to your nafs. It, in fact, your nafs becomes that. That become, becomes your nafs. So if you, if you look at it from this angle, that مثلا when a baby is born, that baby which is born... If he ignored that little bit of perceptions that he learns in the mother's womb, if he ignored that, because there is, there is a level of perception and knowledge there too. But if he ignored that, the moment he is born, what is his nafs? Nothing. It's just potentiality. There's nothing else in his nafs. But look at the same baby in 30 years' time. Let's say he has become an intellectual and, and high-flying A scholar. What is his nafs? The, what is the difference between these two nafs? The difference is in what he knows. The difference in, in, is in his knowledge, but whether in, term, in, in the way of perception and exper experiments, but it has become knowledge of his nafs. So the reality of his nafs is what he knows. And the difference between this nafs and the nafs at the time of birth is that very thing that he has learned during his 30 years. Right? We say that he's become more aware in 30 years. Become what? More aware. We definitely he has. But what I'm saying is the difference, his difference with, between him, him at the age of 30 and him at the time of birth is that very knowledge that, is, that his nafs right. become. So what I want to get, what I want to conclude is knowledge is not added to his nafs. His nafs has become that thing. It is not that something is added to his nafs. If there is any, if there is any tinginess that you assume for his nafs, see, please, may Imam Zaman salam help us to understand this. If there is any tinginess, anything that makes his nafs, his nafs is that thing that he knows. So his, know, his knowledge and his nafs are both the same. So they, it is not something that it is added to him. He himself is his nafs. His knowledge is his nafs. So you can say, sorry. That's it. Tahadi aql wa maqul wa il. No, itahadi aql wa maqul. Itahadi aql wa maqul. But here we can say it's itahadi alim wa ma'lum. Means alim. And what is... Yeah, what alim and ilm. You yeah. can say that. Alim and ilm and ma'lum are the same. <coughs> right? But why I use the word aghil? Because we are ta we are, I was talking about the, the issue of ta'aqul and intellectualizing and intellecting, if you like. So aghil and ma'gul are the same and means nowhere... And known are both the same thing. So they are not different. I was telling that how much is they call it ertesam of sovar on the nafs. This is they, what they believe for ilm. Whereas Mullah Sadr says it's a tahad of all alim al ma'lum or agil and ma'gul. It is not ertesam. It is not an external thing added to the nafs. Nafs itself is that very thing that it knows. We cannot differentiate the two. Does it make sense? See, that's a good. That's, I always wanted to ra to raise this issue, and I never, I never remembered it. I always remember it when I'm reading, because when I'm preparing my notes for for our discussion, this is how this is this is what happens. I have 
in mind something about Aql. When I started this issue of Aql, I have in mind, I, in, in, a, in a maqam jam'i, I know my basic perception and understanding of Aql is something. Now I want to open that up. Even at the first place that I decide to do it, I, at the first place, I don't know any of the details that I'm going, to, I'm going to discuss. But I know it in a maqam ejimal and call it laugh. Then I start, I start to go through the books that I, I have. And then through the indexes, I see, yes, this is appropriate for my talk. It, it, seem, it, it opens my talk. It opens my understanding. And then I go to this, I go to... Most of the things I discussed in these last three, four uh, sessions about Aqq was from a Sharad of Avicenna. Some of it was from the, some of the books of uh, Allama Hassan Zadeh, which, which basically are, are, are Mullah Sadra's stuff. Okay? But when I'm doing it, then I tell myself, Masalan, when we say, this is what happens to me quite often. Last night I was bringing this kol aqalin, kol The proof of it. Okay, the proof is in the proof. The good proof of this is in manzume mullah hadi sabzwari. Manzume mullah hadi sabzwari is one of those. Uh, he has got mantir and uh, philosophy, and then he has irfan, and he has. He's, he's very, uh, very famous. All of them of about 150 to 150, 60 years ago. But then, if you want to go into that level, then becomes totally, our discussions become totally different discussion. That means we have to go, it, no, it's nothing wrong with it. We have to start with mantiq, then we have to go and do bedaya and nahaya, and then only we can go to manzume. And people, you know that manzume, people who do manzume, whole, all of manzume, so it's like, between 600 to 1,000 sessions just for Manzuma alone. Okay? So, my, this, tells, um, this explains my approach. My approach is not to go to proof of them, but I have to remember to give you the references. That, what I, that is what I forget. I often forget. So, what we have discussed, about the, most of the things I have talked to, talk to you about has been from a Sharat of Bu Ali, Avicina. But remember, if you go to Asfar, you see, find, you find all of this. Because Asfar is, all of the materials of Abyssinia and Sheikh Ishraq Sohrevardi is raised, discussed, and Mullah Sadr has built upon that and has come to, to Hikmat Mutayyib. Yes, uh, I just thought that uh, I have read the, uh, the process of uh, bringing this notion in that book which you gave it to me, uh, Dr. William Shedek's book on... I'm not sure how deep it is, but there was some way. At that time, it went over my head. Which one? The per uh, perceptions? The perceptions. One. Yeah. So it has this this notion of Mullah Sadr. He has discussed about Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's there must be a way of process of concluding towards it. Yes, but I don't think that he discusses like um, things that I'm now talk talking about. Very, very. F I mean, uh, because even in our talk, I did not talk too much about perception. Perception is a vast. A drug is a big issue itself. I did not talk about it. But you will find some re re relationship with our talks. So, uh, so what I try to do is, Dr. Muhammad, I try to try my, the, my, my best ability is to bring those notions which, though, though they, they, are, they can be proved and they should be proved when you go to those the studies, you prove. But by tasavvur aqli, you can agree with it. So, I mean, there are things that if, we, that if it's not proved, but they, which they are, they have a reality, but if they are not proved, you cannot do even tasawwara if I say it, or if somebody else says that to me, I don't agree with it, unless says and tell me and prove it to me. I, I try not to bring those things to the discussions. Only the things that, like when I say, for instance, when we say, kullu ma'aqulun mujarradun, and then you think, when, I th when you think about it without a very, uh, logical proof, you see, yes, because what is ma'akul, what is aqil, the things, the general things we know about aqil, we accept, we can accept that, yes, mujarrad and ma'akul, because mujarrad can become uh, intellected by other things. 
But when it comes to ahatir, of course, although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mujarrad and is aghil and is mahul, we cannot do ta'aqul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is where the uh, issue of ahatir comes. We cannot have ahatir to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, let's keep this, this, because I need this discussion probably in next week. That kullu aqil and mujaradun, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aqil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ma'qul, he does ta'aqul of his own self, and then he does idrak of his zat by his zat. So he intellects his zat by his zat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Keep that. And if I forget, you remind me next week. <laughs> Of it, we need it for our further discussion. Now, let's see what is akh in us. What are the level of akh in insan, in human being? When someone is born, at that very time, he has got akh or he doesn't. A born baby has akh or not? <coughs> Sorry. Yes. He has akh. Ahsan. He has potential akh, not actual akh. That is referred to as aql hayulani or aql say different aql bil hayula or aql hayulani, but we know what it means because we are not, we should not be fussy about the words. But especially, it's important that we try to understand and attribute the meanings to the words and to be more, to be more uh, friendly with the meanings, because what happens if you do further studies that you see. Even like even in Masha themselves, this category categorization can be different as well. So the meaning are more important than the names. Just know the name, but don't be too much uh, obsessed with the names. So aql hayulani is that a state of aql which is only potential. The person does not have any actual aql itself. But gradually, when he grows, he reaches to a level of uh, it's called Akhle bil Malake. I don't uh, normally even at times I, I, I blame myself. At times I even forget to look for an English name. And then morning, in the morning when we are sitting, I say, oh my God, I should have looked, at, looked up in the dictionary what should, what should I translate Akhle bil Malake. The reason I, also, the reason that I forget is dictionaries, they, a, lot, a lot of times they don't have these words. So it's not easy. But let's... Uh, Let's, it's good for ourselves too, for our types of studies, we learn the Arabic word of it. Because there is no substitute for that Arabic word at all. The Arabic word of it and meaning of it so that we understand. Aqle bil malake. Okay? What does malake mean so that helps to, to, to retain the meaning? <coughs> Sorry? That's also another word. But why the malak malaik or angels called malake? It is because the ability they have. Malaki means ability. The root of the word is refers to ability. So Akhla bin Malaki means the intellect that has got not the ability. It means an actuality in it. Well, Can you say intellect in action? Yeah, intellect in action is intellect, actual intellect. So it's not potential. It, 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 it exists in outside world. So we, know, we all know what is potential and what is actual now, right? So, I'll give an example. Yes, please, thank you. Um, in schools, they, they call it facts or math, for example. Uh, when they get to reach level, they know that it's supposed to be a Yeah. That, mal- yes, that it becomes maliki. Maliki means becomes uh, like actual and fa- all and sits in your mind. Also, in. Uh, in uh, uh, Erfan or philosophy? I think in Erfan they also use the word malaki. It becomes malaki means it is always with you, like what just you just said. And after malaki, more persistence uh, in Mal- malaki. What happens? Something we learn is not malaki. When we keep practicing it, right? Practicing. If, I'm not referring to physical practice. Whenever I say practice, it it can contain that or may not. But practice in when, when it is in your heart, it is with you, and it, it affects your world view and your view and your action. That is practice. So when Malaki is practice, it becomes sefat or attribute. Sefat is part of the wujud. 
is undetachable. Okay? So a reference to that is that we, are, we, uh, we believe that sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not separate from him. But kamal al-tawheed nafya sifat an. The peak of tawheed is when you nafi in Arabic nafya sifat an means you deny those sifat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas it doesn't mean denying in the sense that he doesn't have that sifat. Meaning that it's not separate. Allah, Allah is his sifat. Okay, so and God forbid in, in our daily works and actions and thinking and beliefs, God forbid if something becomes sefat, that is when people become summon bokmon omyon fahum la That is when become in Quran it refers to them as mukhallad dar fil nar. That means they are always because sefat is there, you cannot change. To changing the sefat, then sefat because sefat is the person, the nafs itself. So much istighrar it finds malaki becomes sefat. Then inqilab in zat is required. Inqilab in zat is mahal. They say inqilab of zat. Inqilab, you understand inqilab. Means when zat totally changes, becomes something else. That is called inqilab dar fi zat. Inqilab dar zat. So when some uh, uh, something becomes sefat. Uh, on, only Allah knows what happens, but that becomes a person himself. So anyway, let's go back to our talk. That aql after at the level of birth is aql hayulani or aql potential aql only. Gradually, when the when the child grows, that aql becomes aql bil malaki. Aghrib al is when he starts to know obvious and badihiyat. There are badihiyat for him. He knows is, is not. He doesn't need to, to do any reasoning. This exists, this doesn't exist. Right? That is badihiyat. Or day and night. These are badihiyat for the child. He doesn't need, he doesn't need to reason for him. This is when aghrib, it becomes Aghrib al But from this level, this is clear, right? There is knowing only very basic, uh, but uh, obvious things. But the here means obvious. So when reached to to that level of obvious things, are some obvious things are known for him. So he is got akhlebel malaki. But gradually the child grows and reaches to a level which is called akhlebel fail. Okay, so this bel fail, do not confuse it with the. General terms of potential and fail. Akhlebel fail here is that when the child, this is about the age of six, seven, eight, depending on different child, when with the help of obvious and badihiyad, you are able to do reasoning for him. Reasoning means what? Reasoning basically means you do sokra and kobra and conclusion. Sokra and kobra and conclusion is, you say, masalan, uh, all the woods, if he learns, let's, let's ask him. Uh, he learns all the woods have got this brown color. Wood has got brown color. And if you tell him all the dining tables are made of wood, then you can prove to him all the dining tables are have got brown color. These are very simple sohra kobra natije conclusion. It's like if you put your hand in the fire, and it's gonna burn. The fire is hot. That's true, but that's, that's probably a level higher than this reasoning. This is reasoning. That's no more reasoning. Okay, he learns that, and then from that he learns that all the fires are hot, because when you see it. But uh, I don't uh, disagree with what you said, but only uh, what I'm saying is, I'm trying to say how Badihiyat, with the help of Badihiyat, people, uh, children can start to learn and do conclusion. So with this gradual conclusion, keeping the conclusion in them, in their nafs, they are passing, th- uh, they are getting through the aql level fail. Okay? So, three levels of aql, that's what I want to stick in mind. So that if anyone brings another word for it, you do not get confused. So you refer to meaning, okay, what level of aql is this? Aql with potential aql only, aql. 
which is bel malake which is just getting to know the badihiyat ah which is by use of badihiyat do reasoning and logical conclusions to attain that is aqli bel fil another level they have is called aqli bel mustafad unfortunately i don't have whiteboard to write you at this this words uh, but mustafad means mim sin teh sorry my very <laughs> backward teaching <laughs> mustafad i can write it for you afterwards but anyway i'm sure dr mohammed knows what i'm just saying it for those who may not know arabic fi must fi te fa alif dal right mustafad aql bul mustafad okay Okay, what is Aqlib al-Mustafad? What the state of Aqlib is Aqlib al-Mustafad? What happens when in Aqlib al-Fil, when a person starts to, uh, 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 to uh, with the help of logic or, or, uh, or reasoning and use of badiyat to get other conclusions and get to know more other things, as long as that person is in the process of thinking and discussing and arguing things, those تصورات عقلی and knowledge is with him but it is not always with him he only remembers them when he talks about them right now when we we are discussing about all of this but we are not discussing i mean it's not it does not have any huzur in us what we know about uh, what happened in egypt only when uh, when we dis- is mentioned it comes back to you. or if we might forget about the uh, in, uh, invasion of Iraq in 2003 or 2004 so these are the things that by saying it become when someone is able to have a huzur to all his knowledge at all times that is called aql bil mustafat okay aql bil mustafat is when you are able to to have huzur and pr- all those things that you know has presence in your mind because they don't have presence at all times they only have presence when you think about them but they go to a corner of your mind if you like uh, until you something bring them back story in memory yeah you can say a story in memory so aqlib al mustafa is when you have constant presence to your knowledge <coughs> it's like other is a challenge also aqlib al mustafa is not i mean but the, that, that is possible it is not something so that that state of aql is something that we can recognize it by explaining but there is another level of aql which is called aql muktafi remember these words that we say mustafad sometimes they may call it mustakfi remember don't get confused when if, if someone called them aql mustakfi instead of mustafad mustakfi again mustakfi Dr. Muhammad, you're there, you write it and show it to them, they see what, how, at least he, how it looks like. Aql al-Mustakfi. It is Mustafa, Mustakfi and Mustafa yeah. the same? Yeah, the same. Which is the next one? Muktafi. In Arabic, when the words are used by sin, which are there, uh, we say, Barbabi istif'al. Istif'al, means which, that sin and te, uh, when they are used. That, that shows a request and demand for it. So then they say, uh, <coughs> when you want water, when you, you demand water. Or you say, when you demand action and fail. That Aleph Sinti in Arabic shows that. So when we say, Aqle Mustakfi is Esme Fa'il of that person who is looking for that who demanding and uh, trying to reach to that level of kifayat. It comes from kifayat means sufficiency. So we want to reach to the level of sufficiency if you want. That aql mustakfi. So we, so we want to reach mustakfi or muktafi? No, I'll tell you what muktafi is. Oh, okay. Mustakfi is uh, the, uh, our level. Normal people that we are intellectual and we are grown, we are learning, we are studying. So we are in the level, we have got aql mustakfi. 
But who has aql muktafi? Muktafi, because that, that level of demand is not that, that means he, he already is sufficiently knowing and everything he does know. So who has got aql muktafi? Ma'asum. Only ma'asum. Ma'asum has got aql muktafi. We people have only, we have aql mustakfi or aql bin mustafa. This mustakfi, muktafi and mustakfi probably are, are terminology, probably, I can't remember clearly. Terminologies of Mullah Sadra, but Bil Mustafat and, Muk- and Bil Fil and Bil Mustafat are terminologies of Abyssina. Okay? Getting late. So I, don't, I want at least to finish this part so that next week I know where to ask. I, otherwise I have to come back again. You don't mind that I take a few more minutes. Okay? So these levels of aql that we discussed, aql in potentiality and aql in the level of knowing only obvious and badihiyat, aql in level of knowing badihiyat and able to do reasoning, and aql in level of having presence to all your ma'lumat and knowledge, and aql in a level that is full of knowledge and knows everything at all times. That is aql and muktafi. Okay? So, these are like very much similar to in terms of, these are based on Qubwe and Fil. This, this type of classification and explanation for Aqq is based on is the, the, the underlying uh, structure of this is Fil, Qubwe and Fil. Potential and actual, right? You all understand it. Potential and actual are the, are, are the, are the notions of Aristotle or Arastu has introduced this uh, concept which is very, very good and complete concept and it really explains the whole world, material world. So based on that we are, we are explaining. It's very much similar the way we explained about Akh is similar of Nodfe and Mosque and Alaghe because we know that, we may not know, I mean if you don't know we have to know. Mosque is no more Nodfe, Alaghe is no more Mosque. They are all changed, they are different states. To, uh, for us they may all look, okay, one thing which is baby in the mother's womb. But in terms of their level and status, they are totally different creatures. So it's the same thing with the aql. Aql hayulani or aql potential aql is totally different creature uh, as opposed to aql belfil and bel malaki, bel malaki and belfil and bel must, bel must, must, must Okay. This is basically what we wanted to know and what we, what we wanted to learn about aql in insan, in human being, okay? And we know that there is also an aql called aql muktafi, which belongs to masum. And also, another thing that I uh, have to tell you before I finish is ta'aqqul does not go with ta'aluq. It's so obvious when you look at yourself. You understand ta'aluq? Of course, Dr. Muhammad knows. Ta'alluq means affiliation. Ta'alluq. Okay? Ta'aqqul and ta'alluq are so opposite of each other. The more ta'aqqul and the more ta'alluq means affiliation for worlds we matter you have, the less ta'aqqul you can do. Try. I mean, when I say try, you cannot try, sit and, you cannot start and to create ta'alluq for yourself now. But um, when I say try, I mean, look and ponder. Not only on yourself, the people around you. you. We find people with more ta'alluq, they have less ta'aqqul. So it's very clear. Engagements. Yeah. Engagement with those ma- material ta'alluq, want, wants for ma- material words. Why, why, why it's like that? We, we already said, because ta'aqqul is mujarrat. Ta'alluq is opposite of mujarrat. Ta'alluq is all your wants for material words. In fact, it so much engages you, not, it's not, it's not disengaged, it engages you with matter, with, with, with all material world. And we discussed already about what matter is at our first discussion, first session, we said matter is the world of distance and bod and takasur and zulmat and wahshat. So how can one, because when this becomes in the heart, when ta'alluq of this material world goes, sits, sits in the heart, Right? We become so mutakassir, it's, diff- it's no more easy to do ta'aqul. Because you have to have a level of tajarud to be able to do ta'aqul. 
So this is one of those notions that I just said. These are things that, yes, they have, they need to be proved philosophically. But when you think of it, you can see around you, it's like that people who are less um, engaged, have less engagement in material world, you can see they are more wiser, they are, and, but uh, provided, provided you do not mix up vahm with aql. Vahm and aql are two different things. We, we find a lot of very intellect, in, in, uh, I mean, apparently intellectual and running good businesses, making good business plan and making a business happen like this. They are all level of vahm. We are not talking about that level. But when it comes in the level of ta'aqul and having aq, ta'aluq and ta'aqul cannot be together. They are very opposite. And we have our this, not using the same word, to say, hubba oh, dunya and hubba al-akhirat cannot be in your heart together. We have uh, this in those lines, which is basically explaining this. Okay? So, I was going, I have more for today, but I will leave it, inshallah, for next week. What we want to do next week is, Loh and Ghalab. I'll leave that for next week. Okay? Next week means next session. We, we talk about, hopefully, inshallah ta'ala, if I'm alive, we talk about Loh and Ghalab, and then, then we go to the Loh, which is mentioned in Quran, and then we want to see what those Loh or Alwah are, and, and hopefully, hopefully next week will be our last week of Aqt. But we shouldn't promise it. We shouldn't push ourselves. If there is more to talk about it, we go to the next week. Bar Muhammad al Muhammad Salabat.